But women themselves, according to this, according to tradition, are closer to death than men are. Because they're closer to the cycles of nature and earth. Women are, and they're more polluted. Okay, why are women dirtier than men? And therefore closer to death and closer to corruption. They bleed? Yeah, they bleed, yeah. It's, why is that dirt you bleed too? Not regularly. <laughs> so they bleed regularly. Where do they bleed? From their nose? I guess I'll put myself up for this. Well, from the yeah. reproductive organs. What do you mean they're reproductive organs? Does your vagina bleed every month? No. What, what's bleeding? The uterine wall. The uterine wall, what does it do? It sheds. It sheds off. The wall of the uterus has got to get out. And how does it leave your body? Through the vagina, the vaginal uh, canal, with a lot of blood that is, that does, it's not your vagina bleeding, dear God. It's like that. <laughs> It's the, the uterine wall that carries with it a bunch of blood as it leaves you, and you get rid of that uterine wall every month. Now, in less developed cultures where people have babies early and, and um, breastfeed the babies for three or four years, as, for example, Bush people do in Kalahari, women only have a handful of periods in their entire lives. Isn't that interesting? You might have six or seven rather than monthly ones. And that's very stressful to your body, that monthly stripping away. That's really a major deal. So women bleed from inside. Where are their sex organs, by the way? You know. Between their legs. Inside, inside? pretty much, right? <laughs> Where are your sex organs? We're outside. Outside, hanging out there for all the world to see, right? Yeah, but they have an open yeah. system. There's different, there's an open system. It's an open system, it's inward, it's kind of secret, right? Again, closer to nature, it's kind of a secret place, like a tomb, where the baby grows inside the tomb or the mausoleum and then emerges into the world. So women have a kind of, and what do women do to men's penises, their erections, their fertility? They make it go away. Women are murderers, okay? They kill male potency in a kind of hilarious act of reduction. Men succeed in their death, and women's job is to kill male desire. So women are deeply associated with murder and death. But wouldn't that put them closer to regeneration? Because mm -hmm. while they kill the desire, they also bring it about. They bring that out the product of your work <clears throat> and your superiority. But it's not necessarily our work because it's a it's a a relationship, right? It doesn't come not from for, just me. It comes not from not for old timey people who else. didn't understand the biology. No, it's the little guy who walks into the womb and sits there and gets bigger. That's his home. Woman contributes nothing. In the traditional picture of that. It's none of this combining of things. No. no. Well, what do I say today? Mm -hmm. So what do I say today? It's the older ideas, one of Bradbury's points is old ideas have a hard time dying. Okay, so there is a kind of so it's gonna change. She makes a big point that these changes are changing all the time. But fundamental ideas like that take longer than you would want them to to change. It's just the, I mean, people get into habits. Yeah. Is this kind of one of the reasons why traditionally and still like it happens, women are still oppressed? Oh, sure. And, like, is this kind of where it came from, basically? Yes. We're very, I mean, people are adaptive. Yes. You can say legally, on the, on the level of reason and the public sphere, women are equal. But Generally speaking, people have been running the show for a while and they're finding 10 million other ways to make it work to their advantage. Right? That's object. We just assume that. There's just, um, it's interesting stuff because there's it seem like definitely you, know, you just look at the, the birth control issues and everything, there's this fear of female sexuality that's very apparent still in our society. And you know, we, I don't think we even know why we have that, but a lot of us have been something. You know why we have it. <laughs> 
You well, just don't I, want I to say. Like a lot of it is quite biblical. Honestly. Why do we have a fear of the, the vagina and the secret sex parts and the pain and all that stuff? I mean, I have theories, but I don't know. Well, give us one. <laughs> they're not dismissible. Maybe they're terrible. Maybe they're great. <laughs> I feel like there's a fear from men of women who are in control of their sex lives. Of what? Like who are in control of their sex lives because it why know, is that? destabilizes men being in control of their sex But why is that? Why is that so destabilized? I mean, I always chalked it up to like a religious basis. No, there's something physical we're talking about. It's got, yes. Basically, men. <clears throat> Whether consciously or subconsciously, we're aware that that's like our, our weakness. Why is it a weakness? Because we can't respect, in many cases, like, really, really hard to resist a woman's... Or it isn't hard. Yeah. At least not forever. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that part of the meaning it's of all like this? So why do, like why white men associate women with negativity and death because of their fear and of their sexuality? What do women have that men don't have? The ability to be part of life. What? The ability to have sex a lot when men are done. That's terrifying. If you know that the woman you're with could have sex with 30 other people the same night, none the worse for it, move on with life and have orgasms with all of them, that's pretty upsetting. <laughs> now, if you repress women to keep them in a very narrow social box, you feel better about it. But if they're kind of on equal footing with you and can make their own choices, that's really terrifying. All right? To somebody who wants to lock things down and have some certainty and have some predictability. So, so do you think we've always... Because that... Like, we only care about that if there's an emotional connection. If there's a love or whatever you want to call it because you know I have no reason to care if you go out and sleep with 30 other guys unless I have That's some right. sort of emotional connection so do you we think make that emotional connections are we social animals like doggies do we make emotional connections yes. I would say I mean kind yes. of we do yes I think men make them maybe more than women do kind of very popular mm -hmm. believe okay so we like mean? to lock things down and have it sensible and it's going to be there and regular and people will be there when I get home at night so do you think that that is something that is natural to humans? That's that how we something that tend has to, we seem to like most, not everybody, but a lot of people seem to like this, yes. Okay? And interestingly, in modern society, as women become more independent sexually and financially and economically in, in terms of power, they seem to like it less than men do. Like what? Connecting in that kind of locked down way it seems less important or interesting. Well, is it, I mean, since, like, I mean, if, like, a woman, if you have a baby, like, or a fetus, or if you're pregnant, I can, um, sorry, um, that, like, and you, like, I know that baby is mine. If I, oh, no, that, that's, yes. But the man doesn't, so it doesn't have that, like, doesn't match it with the woman's power that men are created? But all, no, what does a baby do? That's an interesting how the baby does. What does it do to a woman, even in our culture? Ties you down. That'll keep you at home. <laughs> All right? Have the baby. She's not going to be screwing around. Because babies are completely consuming, aggravating, draining, maddening. You can't really do a lot else unless you got the money to pay some other person to take care of it. You're screwed. And this thing's going to be hanging on you year after year after year because it takes a long time to educate a human being and it's going to cost you a ton of money. <laughs> One of the effects of women's greater liberation is more women get stuck with this task alone than ever before. And that kind of keeps them down, doesn't it? Single moms are not running around much. They're exhausted and worried about where the next paycheck is coming from with the rent. It's not easy, okay? So they're, they're trade-offs. But again, any time we're dealing with a social phenomenon, we're dealing with templates and models and symbols that go way back in time and of which we are not entirely aware, okay? So the feelings we have about women and death go back a long way. They're not completely conscious. Um, so the fact that there are these um, assumptions go way back in time, just 
Oh, not at all. No, her claim is that they're not. Mm -hmm. She makes two claims. They are not universal by any means. Everybody's got it. Every society has to deal with debt. That's universal. What we do about it is entirely accidental, number one. And number two, what we do changes constantly within any society. She does not, this is important, she does not look at societies as if they're finished literary texts or plays. She uses a dramaturgical model, but it is finished. She thinks that there are layers of templates that are competing or contradictory, and they're always changing. Okay, so that's important. No, there are no universals except the fact you die. And within a culture, things don't say the same. They build on each other. Well, let's talk quickly about the build, okay? And that's a really important point. Okay. Keep that in mind as we go ahead. I'm not going to say one way or the other what's right about this. I'm just saying these are the options. Okay. 